Apple just announced the new iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Pro lineup, and as expected, the normal iPhone 40 models are sticking with the last gen A15 chip and only the iPhone 14 Pro is getting the new A16 Bionic. While watching the keynote, I immediately noticed how little Apple's focused on the new A16 and its performance. The few data points they did share made me wonder, is the A16 Bionic really a new chip or are we getting a rebranded A15 produced in a slightly better 4 nanometer process? Let's find out. In order to uncover all these differences between the A16 and the A15, we have to look at each individual aspect of the SoC. This includes the basic hardware specs, for example, how many GPU or GPU cores are used, but also the architecture behind these building blocks and areas of the chip that are not immediately obvious from a performance point of view. And of course, transistor count and process node are also a part of the picture. Let's start by taking a look at the CPU of the new A16 Bionic. The A16 Bionic has a 6-core CPU with 2 high-performance and 4 high-efficiency cores. Apple has used this very same layout since the A11 and of course, it is unchanged from the A15. Apple is very cautious with a direct performance comparison versus the A15. All they told us is that the A16, and I quote, is faster than the A15. That's it, no numbers, no indication as to how much. If we take the performance metrics they did show us, comparing the A16 to the 3-year-old A13, we can still use it to estimate the general performance gains, since we know how much faster the A15 is compared to the A13. Based on this imprecise chart, the high performance scores of the A16 should be a little bit less than 10% faster versus their A15 counterparts, and as such, it is understandable that Apple doesn't give us technical numbers, because we are used to much higher generational gains over the iPhone. Even more interesting are the efficiency claims, since the high performance cores are supposed to be 20% more efficient versus those in the A15, which is a decent generational improvement. We already have early Geekbench numbers, and while it's not the best benchmark, we can use it to deduct another important aspect of the CPU, the clock speed. According to Apple, the A15 clocks with up to 3.2 GHz, which is also visible in Geekbench, with a reported clock speed of 3.23 GHz. The clock speed reported by Geekbench for the A16 has increased to 3.46 GHz, which would indicate an official clock speed of around 3.4 GHz. That's a 7 to 8% increase in clock speed over the A15, and interestingly, very close to the sub 10% performance uplift I estimated by looking at a chart Apple provided, which would mean that almost all of the performance improvements are clock speed related, indicating very little to no architectural changes. This is further amplified by the fact that Apple did not introduce new code names for the CPU cores of the A16. With previous generations, Apple regularly updated the code names even if architectural changes were minimal. Unless Apple is going to announce new names in the future, it is highly likely that the A16 is using the same Avalanche high performance cores they introduced with the A15 last year. The only question is how Apple managed to increase the efficiency of the performance cores by 20%. There are two possibilities. One, by using an improved process node to achieve higher efficiency, and two, it could be based on architectural improvements. Of course, a mix of those two factors is also possible. Apple is using a new 4 nanometer process for the A16, so efficiency gains based on an improved process node are highly likely. More on that later, when we will take a closer look at the process node. So far, we have only talked about the performance cores. But Apple is even more reserved when it comes to the efficiency cores. Apple literally made zero claims regarding performance or efficiency compared to the A15. All we got was a chap at the competition. But they did call the cores new without going into further detail. As such, there is very little to go on and I think it is safe to say that the four efficiency cores of the A16 are the same Blizzard cores as found in the A15. If there were any relevant performance or efficiency improvements, you can bet Apple would have told us. Wrapping up, the CPU part of the new A16 seems to be largely unchanged from the A15. The single digit gains of the performance cores are most likely due to the increase in clock speed and the increase in efficiency could be based on process node improvements. Although I would not completely exclude the possibility of a small architectural change in this area. The efficiency cores seem completely unchanged, at least Apple has given zero indication otherwise. I guess it's like clock speed increase with a single digit speed up is possible, but since Apple literally did not mention 
any improvements at all, I'm inclined to think it's close to a one-to-one -one port. Next up are the GPU and the Neural Processing Unit. I've grouped these two together since both have seen some obvious but very limited changes. The A16 is using a 5-core GPU design, same as found in the A15. And as with the CPU part, Evel is giving us very limited information about possible performance gains, indicating very little change over the A15. The most important difference for the GPU is the increase in memory bandwidth, which according to Apple has improved by 50% over the A15. This is due to Apple switching to new low-power DDR5 memory, while the A15 was still using older low-power DDR4X. GPU performance is heavily influenced by memory bandwidth, and this upgrade should result in a decent performance uplift over the A15, especially in memory-dependent replications, like games. If Apple can combine it with a slightly higher clock speed, the GPU performance of the A16 could turn out a lot better than that of the A15, but heavily depending on if a application is bandwidth limited or not. Looking at the NPU, Apple advertises an increase in performance from 15.8 trillion operations per second in the A15 to 17 trillion in the A16. While the increase by 1.2 trillion might sound like much, percentage-wise it is exactly in the same 7-8% to ballpark as we have seen with the CPU cores and as such, I think this performance uplift is also based on a clock speed increase, with little to no architectural changes to the actual MPU hardware. It also makes sense that Apple is reusing the A15 generation MPU since it was a complete redesign over the A14 which resulted in a rather large performance increase from 11 trillion ops in the A14 to 15.8 trillion in the A15. To recap, both GPU and MPU see very little change over the A15, though the switch to new low power DDR5 could have a larger impact on graphics performance. From the MPU performance numbers, we can deduct a slight clock speed increase in line with the CPU but no architectural changes. Now, let's take a look at the display engine and the ISP. These areas of the SoC are usually not at the center of attention, since fancy CPU, GPU or even NPU numbers attract much more interest. It is also part of the chip where performance is harder to measure. Apple claims rather large changes to both, the display engine and the ISP, in order to support the new features of the iPhone 14 Pro. These are most likely related to the new always-on display, which affects the display engine, and the new 48 megapixel camera, which affects the ISP. One of the key features of the new iPhone 40 Pro models is the always-on display. So far, turning off the display has been one of the most important aspects for saving battery life. Designing a display that doesn't turn off but remains power efficient at the same time is very challenging. Apple is tackling the always-on power door issues with three technologies, a low refresh rate, smart display dimming, and processor power management. Lowering the refresh rate to as low as 1 Hz reduces the amount of times the pixels in the display are refreshed, greatly reducing power draw. This not only affects the display itself, the display engine also needs to support this feature, allowing for flicker-free 1 Hz refresh rates. The same goes for the dimming of the display, where only important parts like the clock and new notifications are using increased brightness, while the whole background is dimmed to further reduce power draw. The display engine needs to reliably support these new dimming features. The third aspect is to use as little power as possible to update this low hertz dimmed always on display. Apple claims they are using co-processors and I'm not sure if they are talking about the efficiency cores or maybe even another new part of the display engine, which could allow all six CPU cores to fully power down during the always on display mode further reducing power draw. I actually love the idea to add a small fixed function part to the display engine that enables updates of the always on display, but this is pure speculation on my side. Then there is the new camera. With the update to a 48 megapixel sensor, Apple is confronted with a much higher processing demand for the camera and video functions. And as a result, a new ISP is needed. Apple didn't go into details, but I think it is highly likely that large parts of the ISP have been completely redesigned to support the huge amount of pixels and new functions like the new 2x digital zoom. In conclusion, the display engine and the ISP seem like the most reworked parts of the A16, with substantial redesigns at the hardware level to support new display features and in order to keep up with the increasing performance needed to process high resolution images. Last but certainly not least, the A16 Bionic is manufactured in a new 4 nanometer process node, while both the A14 and A15 were manufactured in a 5 nanometer process node, 
Apple finally switching to a different node, or so it seems. If we take a closer look, we can see that while there is a change in a number, all available 4 nanometer nodes are still based on TSMC's 5 nanometer design rules. In a nutshell, while this 4 nanometer node might have a different name, it is just another optimized 5 nanometer version. Apple never really discloses which specific process nodes they are using, but it is highly likely that the A14 was produced in TSMC's N5 node and the A15 made a switch to the improved N5P version. Currently, there are three different 4 nanometer versions being developed by TSMC. The base N4, the advanced N4P, and the high performance N4X. TSMC is developing a lot of different N4 options because their next gen 3 nanometer process is delayed and they need to offer more choices to the customers in the meantime. To figure out which 4 nanometer process Apple is using for the A16, all we need to do is to look at the release timelines from TSMC. With N4P, TSMC expects first tape outs in the second half of 2022, and since it takes at least half a year from tape out to delivery, the N4P process is pretty much out of the question. It's not impossible that Apple, as TSMC's biggest customer, could get early access to a new technology, but if that were the case, I'm sure TSMC would have announced the ramping of N4P production. A16 is unlikely to be based on N4P. N4X is even further away and mostly targeting high performance chips, not power efficient mobile parts like the iPhone SoC. We can expect first tape outs in 2023, which means A16 is also not based on N4X. This leaves only the base N4 process. With A16 being based on N4, the question is how much can Apple gain through this new process node? Both N5P, which is used for the A15, and N4 are optimized 5 nanometer process nodes, and in reality, they are very close in performance. Compared to their base N5, N5P is supposed to offer about 7% more performance, at the same power level, and no density improvements, while N4 offers 11% more performance, plus a 6% improvement in transistor density. As you can see, the difference is very minimal. This begs the question, how Apple is achieving these albeit small performance and efficiency gains over the A15. One reason could be a more mature process and since Apple has a lot of experience with TSMC's 5 nanometer derivatives, the implementation of the A16 might just be a little bit better. Combined with the slight improved node, a single digit clock speed increase at slightly lower power seems very possible. Even more telling than the process node is the transistor count, which climbs to a staggering 16 billion. And while this number is impressive, it's only a small increase over the A15 with its 15 billion transistors. That's only about a 6% increase in transistor count and further underlines my assumption that large parts of the A16, namely CPU, GPU and APU, are pretty much unchanged. A redesign of the display engine, the ISP and small tweaks here and there can quickly account for an increase of about 1 billion transistors. The A15 clocked in at about 3.2 billion transistors more than the A14 and you know it wasn't a major redesign. In light of these numbers, the 1 billion for the A16 actually seems rather small. In my opinion and based on the limited information available at this time, the A16 Bionic is Apple's smallest generational improvement yet with little to no architectural changes in core parts of the SoC. The 6-core CPU seems largely unchanged, with performance gains mostly based on clock speed. The efficiency cores seem to be exactly the same as the Blizzard cores in the A15, and while the performance cores are supposed to be more efficient, performance also points to a reuse of the Avalanche architecture. The GPU sticks to a 5-core design, and since Apple did not talk about any performance improvements related to the GPU core itself, it's also very likely the same graphics architecture as found in the A15. Only the switch to faster low power DDR5 memory has the potential to increase GPU performance. The NPU shows a small performance increase in line with the CPU, which indicates an uplift driven by slightly faster clock speeds and again no architectural changes. The area where the A16 actually implements fundamental changes on a hardware level seems to be the display engine and the ISP, with more functionality and performance to support the new iPhone 14 Pro features like the always on display and the 48 megapixel camera. I am interested if the A60 Bionic will show any increase in system level cache size, which has been rather small compared to Apple's larger M1 and M2 chip. Now, you can be disappointed with the stats of the A16, but it is important to understand that Apple had to adapt to the delay of TSMC's 3 nanometer process, which is a full node improvement over previous 5 nanometer designs. With the delay of N3, Apple had basically two choices. Either backport their version of AA16 designed for a much denser and efficient 3 nanometer process, 
to the less capable 4 nanometer node and risk creating a large, power-hungry and expensive chip, or adapt to the new reality and create a A16 with minimal changes over the A15, but on a smaller die and with proper power envelope. As much as I would have liked to see Apple's new 3 nanometer architecture, I think Apple made the right choice. Especially in today's economy with continuing supply chain problems and out of control inflation, a smaller and more reserved A16 is helping to keep the costs down, which in turn allows Apple to not raise the prices while keeping their high margins. And buying the base iPhone 14 with the A15 chip doesn't hurt as much if you know there is very little difference. Looking into the future, I'm curious how Apple's roadmap will look like. Currently, Apple always introduces a new architecture with the A series and then follows up with the M chips based on the same architecture. The A14 came first and the M1 was based on the A14 architecture. Same with the A15 and the M2 based on the same architecture. With the A16, Apple had to deviate from their usual plan. And as such, I think it's not very likely that next year's M3 will use the same A16 architecture, since it is basically a slightly improved A15. With the introduction of 3 nanometer chips next year, we might see a M3 lead the way with a new architecture and a A7 team based on the same design coming in a little bit later. Of course it is possible that the M3 will be based on A16, but I currently don't think so. Now I want to get your input. What do you think about the A16 Bionic? Are you disappointed? Do you think Apple might have hidden some changes I didn't see? And do you agree with my analysis? Leave a comment down below and let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.